this is really one of the key things, isn't it? What can we do? How can we minimise the chance of catching coronavirus? Well, the BBC's Michelle Roberts and Laura Foster have some ideas for us. Number one, wash your hands more. The more you wash your hands, the less likely you are to spread the virus to other people. So if you've been out in a public place, on a bus or a train, wash your hands as soon as you can afterwards. And when you're done, turn the tap off using a tissue and put it in the bin. Antibacterial gels do work, but soap and water is best. Number two, avoid touching your eyes, nose and mouth, because that's the way the virus could get into your body. You can still touch your face, but only if you've washed your hands before. Number three, catching your coughs and sneezes. Experts think coronavirus is spread by droplets that come out of your nose and mouth. So when you sneeze or cough, catch them with disposable tissues, then bin it and wash your hands. hands. Disposable tissues are better than handkerchiefs that you carry around with you all the time. If you don't have a tissue, sneeze or cough into the crook of your elbow. <clears throat> don't touch things with your hands if you don't have to. The less you touch things like surfaces, handrails, lift buttons, the less likely you are to catch the virus or indeed spread it on. Well, because it is so important, it was a bit quick there, I thought, we're going to show you how to wash your hands properly. Tulip, you're going to time us. Yes. Time is of the essence. Mm -hmm. Jake, take it away. I'm going to roll my sleeves up so that uh, I can make sure that I get all of my hands and my wrists. I'm going to demonstrate with some alcohol gel, but the principles are the same. So what we're trying to do is cover as much of our hands and wrists as possible, whether it's soap and water or whether it's alcohol gel. So I'm going to put a good amount on. And I'm going to start by... Well, that's a lot more than I would have thought. Loads. OK, right, I'm going to do it too with you. I, yeah. I did overdo it yeah. slightly. <laughs> Every pump's different. So I'm going to rub it over and then back of my hands so my fingers yeah. are together. And then the other side. And then like this. Fingers together. And then like this. So I'm trying to cover all of my fingers. Underneath jewellery and things as well. Yeah. yeah. And then people forget their thumbs stick out. Oh, uh, yeah. So good go on your thumbs. And then fingertips. We're still going, Sheila. You've just passed 20 seconds there. So Sorry, you... it's because I'm talking. And then don't forget your wrists, finally. So it's 20 seconds the time, because that felt like a long time. You can take as long as you want, but um, at Is least... Is there a minimum? At minimum 20 seconds to get good coverage. So, Jake, I've touched so many surfaces today, when, from leaving home to being here. How often should I be washing my hands? So, um, as often as you can, really, within reason. Um, and certainly, if you've... Uh, uh, touch lots of surfaces so uh, if you've been out and about it's um, good to have some alcohol gel with you if you have but good old soap and water is good enough certainly before eating and um, if you think you need to touch your face try and wash your hands before you touch your face I mean shops are selling out of this what should we be looking for if we see it what kind of percentages of alcohol should be in our sanitizer so different types of hand sanitizer most contain alcohol you're looking for a minimum of 60 percent most will contain 70 percent alcohol or higher so that will kill the coronavirus that will okay great well let's uh take another question and this one comes from claire in singapore she has a toddler and she says i see a lot of people wearing masks and using sanitizer how effective are these in stopping the spread of the virus and how at risk are our children so we have a mask here, Jake. Any good? So uh, this is what we call a, a surgical mask. It's quite a simple mask. Masks are really important for healthcare workers. But if you're um, a member of the general public, the evidence isn't great to show that they're going to protect you. Um, that's because um, when we use them, if we work in a hospital, we use them for a short period of time. We're trained in their use and uh, we get rid of them in a safe way. If you just have one of these on all day, um, you're probably trying to eat and drink wearing it. I've seen people with it worn like that, which is ineffective. Um, then people will take it off, have something to eat. They've contaminated the outside if they've got virus on their hands. Then they're putting it back on their face and potentially exposing themselves. So just to be clear, your advice is we don't need a mask. So our advice in England is that we don't recommend people wear masks to prevent getting infection. Sometimes we ask people who've got symptoms to put them on because they will stop some cough droplets coming out. And Tula, to our question from Claire in Singapore, mm. what about children? 
So there is still a lot of research going on in this area and in fact many areas around uh, coronavirus but it does seem from some early studies, a study that involved around 44,000 people who got the coronavirus um, in China, that the risk to children does seem to be a little bit lower. About 1% of children and young people, so under 20s, uh, were infected with this coronavirus. So it's a similar thing for them. Of course you need to make sure that they're washing their hands regularly, that they're you know, staying clean and they're not touching lots of surfaces Difficult with kids, <laughs> difficult with kids, but just make sure, you know, and it's not just the hand sanitizer, use soap and water. I mean, you know, everyone's happy got access to that. And row, row your boat. Row, row your boats, yeah. Twice. A good earworm. Yeah. Okay. That's how you know the 20 seconds, because it's obviously hard to figure that out when you're... Absolutely. <laughs> okay, thanks both. Well, there is a lot of damaging misinformation out there. We've all seen it. It's contributing to the panic, the sense of fear that we have. So let's join Roz now on where you should be getting your information from. Roz. Lucy, thank you very much indeed. Now, ever since this new coronavirus was identified in December, we've been dealing what's, with what's been called a new viral threat, not the virus itself, but misinformation, by which I mean reports and advice that are either incorrect, misleading, or completely false. For example, one theory that just won't go away is that this virus came from a Chinese lab. Here's the Washington Times in January reporting that COVID-19 could be connected to a Chinese biowarfare program. Or there's this in February from the New York Post, an opinion piece under the headline, Don't Buy China's Story, The Coronavirus May Have Leaked From a Lab. But there is no evidence to back this up. However, as with a lot of misinformation, there are some grains of truth in there. This outbreak did originate in Wuhan in China, and in that city you'll find the Wuhan Institute of Virology, which is a high-security biolab. But, and this is a very big but, here's the medical journal The Lancet documenting how scientists have analysed this virus, and they've all concluded it came from wildlife and wasn't engineered in a lab. And so, if wildlife is the suspected source. There's been a huge amount of attention on this live animal and seafood market also in Wuhan. Because one theory is that the virus originated in bats that were being sold there. And it's true, that is one possible explanation. This though will not help you understand that. It's a video of a woman eating bat soup that went very viral in the last couple of months with many people blaming this kind of dish for the virus. Except, as this article in the South China Morning Post notes, that video is three years old and it's not from Wuhan. Now this article from the Center for Disease Control helps us on this issue. It outlines how this disease could spread from animals to humans. That can happen via direct or indirect contact or via pests, water or food. So soup may have been involved but not the one in this video and quite possibly not at all. Next there's the issue of advice bad advice. For example, here's a Facebook group telling us if you eat a bowl of boiled garlic, that could cure the virus. It can't. You'll be well aware of lots of people buying these, surgical face masks. Doctors are telling us they aren't going to help you to avoid the virus. And these are just some of hundreds of examples. I should say, there is good advice out there. You could look at the website for the Centre for Disease Control. Also check out the WHO's myth-busting page. And of course, there's the BBC News website with an awful lot of verified information about what's happening and what to do. But there's no doubt, Lucy, that as the WHO director says, we're not just fighting an epidemic, we're fighting an infodemic. Ross, thank you so much. Uh, Jake and Tulip here, very happy to see some of those uh, myths being busted as well. But I think one of the things many of us are tackling every day, Jake, is whether we should be changing our daily lives and what we do. I mean, should we be going to the movies, taking our kids to birthday parties? Should I have given you a hug and a kiss? Hello, or Tulip, who I know quite well, or should all of that stop? So ordinarily, I'd say yes, obviously, but... Um... Uh, it depends where you are in the world at the moment as to what you should do, but we should all be thinking about how our lives may need to change, not forever, but for a short period. So, for example, how's my life changed in the UK at the moment? I'm not shaking hands with people anymore. That's my personal choice. How are you doing this? I'm doing an elbow bump or a foot tap, um, uh, which I think is a, a, a good idea. It's something easy I can do. Um, it doesn't offend anybody that I don't shake their hand anymore. Um, there will be other things if this gets bigger in my own country going forward um, about trying to keep uh, uh, distance from other people. Social distancing. Social distancing. And it all depends on how big it gets, how many people are infected. So there are lots of plans to try and uh, work out when that may happen and then what actions need to be taken. So it's important to listen to the authorities in your own country and listen to their advice.